Yo, yo, okay, what's up? Here we go. It's the uh, 15th, right? Yeah, Thursday, March 15th, 11.43 a.m. Alright, so let me just say, I was ready to go at about 7.30. Because I just heard my mom slam the door on her way to Duke. She works at the Duke Medical School. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Because I know she does this on purpose. She slams that door so loud, you guys. I mean, loud. And she's always telling me. I mean, if, if we go for a ride in her car, because she'll never go for a ride with me driving. Never. <laughs> I mean, I've been in enough accidents, true. You know, in fact, this is interesting. I went to the University of Hawaii spring of 1993, that was my first semester, but I wanted to go a couple weeks before to feel, get, you know, explore and whatnot, get used to it, so I literally flew on the day after Christmas, the 26th, 1992 of December, that was my flight to Hawaii, now listen to this. Two days prior was Christmas Eve. Me and my friend Nikki were found a reason to get basically get into my shit Toyota Tercel that my godfather gave me. And uh, just a reason to jump in it and smoke a little doobie doobie. You know, and of course. This was 1992, South Jersey, we didn't even know what kind of bud was. It was shit, dirt, nastiness. But, you know, we didn't care. It's, uh, 18 years old, you know. Care. So, uh, anyway, we jump in my torso and we tell everybody we're going Christmas shopping because, you know, it's the last day. It's, it's Christmas Eve. And it's like 5.30 p.m. Now, think about that for a second. 5.30 p.m. in December. That means it's getting darker earlier, right? So, um, so it's just as we're driving, and the mall's like about 25 minutes away, towards Philly, not towards Atlantic City, because like I said, I live halfway in between. So basically, if you want to go get into something, you're either going towards Atlantic City, or you're going towards Philly, right? So, uh, all right, so we get in, we're smoking, and, uh, you know, anyway, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, I felt like I was in a different dimension, and, like, these machines, it was such a powerful sound and feeling, it was like the, the heaviest machinery was taking me and moving me, and the sounds were like, it was like I was inside, you ever see, like, in a movie when they want to get rid of a dead body and they put it in a trunk of a car in the car and they smash the car into a little box that's exactly what it was like well okay here so here's what happened we're going towards Philly this old dude 87 years old just gets out the hospital Cooper Medical Center which is a little bit near Philly he's all drugged he's 87 years old out the hospital he's all drugged up He's driving, of course, a huge, wait, hold on, down Trump's time, huge American Buick type, heavy machinery. And we're in this little Toyota Tercel, like, I don't know how much it weighs, nothing. And probably made out of, like, tinfoil, who knows. Probably, because here's what happened. He's coming, and like I said, it's just getting dark, but not enough that the street lights don't come, they're not on yet. It's at that, just in that range, right? So, he's coming, and he's so messed up, he's in our lane, right? But he don't have his lights on, and, on top of that, me and Nick, you were having a good old time, <laughs> this and that and the other, and, ba-boom! I'm talking head-on, except the... Half of the my right side 
and half of his left side. So it wasn't full boom, it was like boom. And then we got turned around like that, and he went veering off like that. And it was, it was serious, right? Like I said, December 24th, 1992. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting because it all happened so fast. Maybe like 10 seconds, I was in this machinery. Everything was going... It was really powerful. It was amazing. But I didn't feel... In fact, not only did I not feel pain, I felt incredible. It, quite possibly the most high I've ever been in my entire life up to that point. Because, you know, as you guys know, when you experience some kind of trauma, you're flooded with opiates. They come to the rescue, you know, so it's not too much to handle. So I was flooded, and let me tell you why. Because I did not have my seatbelt on, and on a head-on collision, my face went, boom, right at the windshield. And not only that, it went through the windshield, and then came back out. And when it came back out, I dragged all kinds of glass, right? So just think about that. And then, once everything settled down, the first thing I did was I looked over, because Nikki was like, oh, my, oh, he was like, ah, my arm, you know, and stuff like that. Because what happened with him, he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. He slammed into the, um, you know, the thing right there. It broke his arm. And, uh, and I was like, I was like, you all right? He looked at me, and all of a sudden, his face was like, boom, white. I mean, he was scared. I was like, what's wrong? He goes, dude, your face is messed up bad. And I was like, I didn't like freak out, because like I said, I was like, opiates were just all in me. I was feeling great. And not only that, but uh, I couldn't see myself. You know, yeah, I could feel like, Fluids, I mean, blood, it was just, it was out of a horror movie, apparently. I don't know, I didn't see myself. You know, so, uh, so, uh, it came in my mind right then. Oh my god, any time now, ambulances is gonna be coming, cops is gonna be coming. So I was like, I was like, Nicky, where's the joint? Right? And uh, he's like, uh, I mean, I don't mean to make fun of him. I mean, I kind of do, you know, but he's not alive no more. You know, Nicky, rest in peace. You know, he went he went into the heroin explorations with a little bit too much of a cavalier attitude. You know, he didn't have, uh, he, how can I put this? He didn't have, um, I guess, an academic foundation. He didn't know how to properly properly explore as a psychonaut, whatever. What I'm saying, he is too cavalier, he took too many risks, he overdosed, he's rested, he's sleeping. You know, so, I don't know, maybe I'll see that you in the future, who knows. But, uh, yeah, so I was like, I was like, I was like, Nikki, where's the joint? Cops are gonna be coming, right? And I'm thinking, I'm going to Hawaii in two days, I'm not going to Get locked up and all kinds. Of, my mom would literally shoot me, and you know my uncles forget about it, right? Cause uh, yeah. So anyway, he's like, um, oh, or and I'm like looking around, cause he had it last. I'm like looking around, and I see it, right? Cause he put it in one of these little um coin purses. They're like tiny, tiny, tiny little plastic thing with a dent in it. Uh, an opening, and he put it inside of that, and uh, grabbed it up, and uh, the windows were all blah blah smashed out. So I just like threw that sucker right out the window, and right then, within like a minute, knock 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 knock, because uh, she was knocking on the the metal part, you know, and, and I I don't even know if my window it was probably smashed to pieces. I forget, but uh, she's like, are you? She's like. Yeah, she was, because her face was all in there. And she's like, you guys okay? You guys okay? And, um, she's like, I'm a nurse. Don't move. Don't do nothing, this and that. Oh, yeah. Let me just tell you this, too. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Because not only did I have the wherewithal, if that's what you want to call it, the instinct, to, to get rid of the joint, but I knew that I didn't, you know, I was supposed to have my seatbelt on. And I thought that would be an issue. So, 
I got my seatbelt and clamped it up. Okay, so when she came over and it's, she said it, she's like, "Oh, but you got your seatbelt on, but how'd your face go through the the the?" And she's trying to figure it out, and stuff, you know. <laughs> it was all so surreal. I swear to God, and it all happened like within ten minutes. Um, cops was there, and it's New Year's Eve, so it was just it wasn't like tons of them. It was just one actually, and ambulances. I got put to the one hospital. Nikki got put to another hospital for his arm. And um, plastic surgeon came in. In the next four hours, he was doing with the pick, 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 and the so, so, so. And, uh, you know, I had lots. I mean, I don't know, like a couple hundred stitches, you know. I don't know. Can you see that? You guys, you just, if I try to look while I'm doing it, it you know, it don't work, right? So I'm going to have faith. And just, uh, I don't know, because he did a pretty good job, you know, these plastic surgeons. This was 1992, but you might be able to, anyway, you know, and, uh, do I still have, it was all up, you know, see that little bit above the, uh, above right there, it was all up there, it was like, I, I was like Frankenstein, I have, it was like, all boom, boom. my nose was all, I had to get, uh, uh, a nose job in August. I had to wait till August, and he, and a dude in Hawaii did it. You know, one of his friends, apparently. So, uh, you know, it was all broke up. My face was broke up bad. And of course, you know, once everything settled down, and I got home, and all I wanted to do was sleep, because they gave me all kinds of drugs, and my system was fighting all kinds of like feelings of shock. So, I basically, like, rested, like, 24 hours straight. And everybody was doting on me. It was kind of nice, too, because my mom and my dad hadn't, like, really spoken for, like, years. He lived in the basement, even. and But all of a sudden, they were in the same hospital room. You know, so it was real... It's it was, it was always blessings with stuff, you know? Like, it's, it's always blessings. But, uh... But anyway, like, so, you know... Somebody was like, well, I guess you're not going to Hawaii now. And I was going, I was like, what are you talking about? I'm going to Hawaii, you nuts. And they're like, dude, look at your face. And I was like, I don't care. I was like, it's fine. And uh, so that was it, you know. So basically what I'm saying is, when I went to Hawaii, it wasn't just starting fresh. But it was like, you know how they say, you got to break down the temple before you rebuild it. You know, well, that's what God did to me. He broke it down, and then he built it up from scratch. And, uh, yeah, so...